Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I have another flip through of one of my journals that I recently completed. I shouldn't say recently, it was a little while ago, probably about a month or so ago, but I'm just finally now getting around to listing it and making it available in my shop. I was considering um, different options for uh, where to sell um, this journal, but um, I haven't come to a conclusion yet where that's going to be. I was thinking it was going to be eBay, and uh, and for the time being, I haven't made a final decision. So this one. Uh, will be available in my Etsy shop for now and um, and so I'll be listing down below the day and the time that it will be available if you think that uh, this is the kind of book that you'd be interested in. So let's take a second and get into it. I had to pause for a moment. My sweetie pie was phoning He's on his way home from work. So this book, it's going to almost be like you and I are are looking through it together for the first time, which I'm really looking forward to it. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed creating this journal, and I know I say that every time, but this one is really quite different for me. Um, it's definitely an all-sorts book. It's definitely a Sunnyside all-sorts book. And uh, the title was just so perfect for the title of a journal. It's called A Strange Story. And uh, this book was originally printed in 1892, so it's very, very old. And uh, I, ha I had to do a little bit of repair work, uh, top and bottom, because 1892 is, uh, she's not a youngster, this strange story. <laughs> now let's do a little bit of measuring here. So she's approximately five inches um, wide and approximately seven and three quarter inches uh, long and then approximately about one and a half inches, uh, one and a half inch spine. So I have, I believe I've put uh, seven signatures in here. We're going to find out when we open it up. But in the meantime, I have put my, um, my own label on the back with my signature and it says 2023. So um, that's on the back because the inside, I seem to recall, was too cool to... Um, to put my label in there. Now I've used Sari Silk to create a closure and I've used a drawer pull to make the journal book plate and I love doing that and it actually I've also used one of the chapter headings and it says a, tr a strange story but you can remove that that comes out and you can write whatever you like in there. You can flip it over and put your own title in it, um, whether it's just simply my journal or the year that you wrote in it. It's completely up to you. You don't have to leave a strange story, but that, uh, that actually came from the actual text block of this book. I wanted it to be a really unusual all sorts book. So I put uh, this on the front to look like a science lab specimen card um, with some uh, bugs in it and some labels. And these um, paper clips are, uh, are are permanently affixed there however they are usable so if you had a little stamp or something that you wanted to be able to put onto your cover you can use them in a sense uh, but they 
they will not come off. They have been attached. Um, I just thought it added to the character of the book. So you'll find that this actually makes it quite nice to write in. So if you're worried about that little handle sticking out, it's nice because it just holds it up a little bit higher. So I've used what were uh, what was one of the original interior pages. This book um, had advertisements on both sides and I was able to make use of the loose leaf on, on the front and the back and put it back onto this side of it. Unfortunately, the other side was not salvageable. I've used a lot of old papers in here and uh, this is from um, a 1909 book that I have from Australia. And the original owner of this book was Ruth Tink. And uh, she actually is buried in a little town just uh, about 10 minutes away from where I live. I was able to find her. And uh, now I don't know who... The previous owner was, it says, to Harold from Will and Edith, Christmas 1900, which I love. So I had to leave that in there as well. And then as we go in further, here's the original front, front pages from the book. And I just love this uh, beautiful um, etching on there and the original tissue paper. And then here's where you can see that this book is from 1892 so this is a really old book and my goodness I just love that title a strange story the the journal of the story of my life that certainly would be a perfect title here's a little um, tea dyed folio from a Beatrix Potter book I can't remember now whether I mentioned there's 178 pages of varying sizes in this book. And you're going to see that it has a really interesting waterfall effect of really uh, cool stuff to make this book already even appear like it's full of things that you'd like to get your nose into and, and uh, peek around in. Inside here, I've just tucked some part of a invoice paper under there. This is just a, a little tab that is glued on there with uh, some thread, some embroidery floss, and some cheesecloth with a little uh, Victorian baby on it. Again, because the title is a strange story, I really wanted, really wanted this book to have no rhyme or reason, even more so than my usual all sorts books that I make. This page is from 1879, so wherever possible, I've written the um, year that the papers came from. This came out of a book that was from 18. 88 so I've written that in pencil with a little arrow so that you know that that little fussy cut that I did is from 1888 and uh, I've used I made use of off cuts you'll recognize this from my gardener's uh, tenure diary a page from a tea dyed page from out of my own bullet journal from I'm not sure what year and a little bit of a little bit of collaging there this is uh, just a page out of um, an old, um, one of those like encyclopedia type dictionaries that just had a little bit of information of everything in it. And it was from the 1940s, was the closest I could find for a year of publication for that. And I simply made it look that way so that you knew that it was openable. It didn't really look openable, so I took a bit of the edge off and and did a notch so I've left this unglued if you want you can make it into a tuck spot simply by running some glue right here and here and it would be a wonderful little tuck spot but I'm leaving that up to you here's some 
uh, a paper ruffle that I've sewn on and did a bit of um, distress inking. And this was from some wrapping paper I have that is an old antique map of the world. It's really cool wrapping paper. So again, this is from whenever possible. I have used um, a, a folio here and there from out of the original text block. So you'll see here it says a strange story. So that was out of the original text block. And under here, there's just a little lace flip up. And this uh, fellow is taking a photograph and he's looking over here at chapter one of a strange story. And maybe the uh, whale tail tab has caught his eye. Some pages you'll see that I purposefully put in cockeyed. I just like the way it looks. And it's from out of other books. I just save the interesting looking pages. They make for a fun uh, background for, for you to collage on. This is a tuck spot with um, a tea dyed um, music theory card in there. And this is out of a Sears uh, reprint catalog. And again, it's an odd book. It's a strange story. So you used to be able to buy headstones in the Sears Roebuck catalog. Imagine that arriving at your door. Grandpa's headstones here. I love the way this tea dyeing turned out, and I wish I knew what on earth I did to make it look like that, but it's going in this book, so we will never know. It will remain a mystery. This is a nice big tip out here, and I did a bit of um, paper punching along the edge and a little bit of collaging down here. There's a little tab up here with a bumblebee. This came in happy mail so I put a bulb pin on it with just a little a little bead from I I find necklaces at thrift stores and I take them apart to put them into journals from out of a, it's a photo from out of a book and I just sewed some lace at the top added a bridge tally card in there for journaling on you could put whatever you like in there i just i loved that whoever wrote on it it's still down there here's where i was experimenting some people have been doing this lately i've been seeing a lot of tutorials on youtube so i thought i'd try my hand at it and it was trickier than they made it look they made it look easier but uh, i I used um, packing tape and uh, a diction an illustrated dictionary and it's uh, it's from the architecture of inside of a church the 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 little pool where you dip in, your finger in for the um, for the water to cross yourself and this is out of an old book an old children's school book a little bit of Edith Holden. Hardly feels like a junk journal if there's no Edith Holden in it. And this center uh, play, uh, page I have made into a tuck spot. And I've just put some tea dyed paper in there. Uh, but you can add whatever you like in there. And I've sewn around the edges. And again, you'll see a lot of science-y um, specimen as if it was like a world explorer kind of feel for this book to make it uh, strange this is a vint from a vintage card game um, I thought it was an interesting deck of cards uh, rather than your usual one now let's see I think yeah this is a movable one of my movable tags and uh, it's from out of a book I have on the history of photography. And it was a whole page with photographs of mantle clocks. So, and I've just tucked a bunch of things in here. Here's a page from out of a butterfly, um, a butterfly watcher's book. And it's from 1929. And the, a vintage guest check from a restaurant. 
Here's a little bit more tea dyed paper, double tea dyed. So I, I first I splash it, let it dry, and then I put it in the pan and tea dye it. And a little bit of glued tab with some lace up here. Down here, I have one of those stamps from a company that must have existed at some point because I found it in in a thrift store out in Coburg, Ontario. And uh, I was able to then also find some of these gold labels and it just goes perfectly. So I added a, what looks like a secret potion. And here's another little tuck spot with um, I just had fun with a book that I have on um, specimens from around the world. I, I made use of a lot of things out of that book. Here's a vintage uh, statement, and you can tell because it says 19 here for the year for you to fill it in. Some more of my bullet journal paper, tea dyed. This paper is from an organ, uh, a book to teach how to play the organ and it's from 1914 and then of course uh, I used one of my guest book spreads and I put this uh, bunny fussy cut on it I just thought that looked perfect there for him so every page is already Interesting. I can't imagine what you could do with this and it would make it even more cool. This is just a really cool book. Another little tab up here for no reason except that it looks cool. And a little stamp. Some collaging. And down here, um, I fussy cut this out of a book. I had, I think, on it was either a gardening book or it was out of a Crabtree and Evelyn book that I have. And uh, this was out of a, um, a tin of recipes that I found on one of my thrifting hauls. Sears Roebuck again. More tea dyed paper. This is actually out of the book A Strange Story, so I made use of it and I um, I just tore up a little bit more of the fabric. You'll see it's the same fabric as over here, just for a little continuity. And if we get to a s in between, I bet we're going to find out that that's what I've used to sew the, the um, text block together. I really love how this tea dyeing turned out. I wish I knew what I did. Now this is a tuck spot. I've just put a little piece of vintage uh, note paper in there. But it is also a really big journaling spot. So it looks like a tag. But it is glued in and it is a tuck spot, but it is also a really roomy place to do some journaling in. And I added a whale tail tab and I put um, a uh, word snippet there. And she's out of a 1940s British magazine. And this is actually the label from the um, embroidery floss that I used to sew these signatures together. <laughs> Nothing got wasted. Here's a little um, peephole with a, an interesting gentleman looking out at us. I learned that little trick from Anna at Made by Granath. And then here's another little hidden spot for journaling and a vintage bingo tab holding it closed. And here I've used some clover and a dictionary spot and again some more uh, word snippets and sewed it in. Oh, this is uh, not Sears Roebuck, uh, an Eaton's reprint of an Eaton's catalog. I know that now because I see Young Street, Toronto. And more from A Strange Story, another folio out of there. 
Um, I loved that. <laughs> I, I thought that's the perfect word snippet for that photo. And uh, more tea dyed messages for back when there wasn't voicemail and you actually got your messages written down by somebody. Remember that? Are you are you old enough to remember that? Some vintage little thank you note blank. Uh, this is from a 1985 book of days and uh, another little tea dyed note pad there. And this is one of my movable tags that makes it look like something's hanging out of the book. And I made it using um, tickets. So that's why one side is upside down because they were actually attached and I simply folded them in half and glued them. Um, a little more Edith Holden. And then uh, here's some butterfly wings. Um, closest I can remember is Nick the Booksmith is the one I saw who started this trend of using the butterfly wings as a tab. And I just love it. I really think it... Uh, <coughs> adds a bit of whimsy to a journal and again you'll note the the continuity of the colors of the brick red and the nice warm yellow golden color and more of that cool tea dyeing some more interesting little pages for um For you to journal on some more Edith Holden here. I forget how I did that one. See what I mean? It's like you and I are going through this together for the first time. This one's fun. It's got a little bit of embroidery floss and it's glued in, but you can journal on it. And write something that's private and then roll it back up and tie it closed so that it stays private just for you and anyone leafing through it won't be able to read it. I believe this also came from the text block. There was, it was one of those books that had a lot of advertisements for other books you could purchase in the back. And here's a bit more of that really cool wrapping paper that looks like an antique map of the world. So I, I sewed it in. And then on this side um, is uh, a stencil for the letter S for Sunnyside and Strange Story. That was a wonderful coincidence, serendipitous coincidence, and then a vintage um, card, Crazy Eights card. And here's um, a page out of a 1922 Bible the, from the book of Galatians. A little bit of Frankenstein paper there. This was from um, a a little pamphlet that I got from a winery down in Niagara on the Lake. A little bit more Edith Holden here. And then um, this page was big, so I folded it over and made a tuck spot and did some stamping down there. And here's a vintage guest check. This was attached to it. I forget where. Oh, I think it was there. And um, as old paper does, it came apart, so I'm just sending them together. And then in here is the other side of the Edith Holden paper, so it's also a tuck spot. And then here's one of, um, it's, it's from a booklet of reprint of art. Um, of art uh, pieces of artwork. You know how you can buy them in booklets? I believe. I would have to go back and watch when I made the book. So again, we're working through it together here. Some more Frankenstein papers that you can journal in in unusual directions. <laughs> 
and little bits of collaging with some faux cellophane tape. And this side has Philippians. And then this one, I strategically put it here because it says the end. And it's the last page of the book. And the stencil for the letter S, I used it here for a strange story and sunny side journals. <laughs> and here is uh, this kitty cat who's reading a very interesting book on how to catch rats and mice. And this is also from um, a book I have that came from Australia. And it was from 1909. And then there's a two nanas bookmark in this journal. And on the back, I used one of the pages out of a strange story. So, um, so that's tucked in there. And then just a little bit of paper tucked in there as well. And as you can see here, now you understand why um, I didn't want to cover up with my own, with my label. This paper is just so yummy. It was enough that I put the tuck spot in there, but it really needed the tuck spot. And I just loved that kitty cat trying to figure out how to catch rats and mice as if that wouldn't be instinctive. Now there's a strange story. And then I just used a eyelet to punch one hole in there. So you're going to see because this book is so old, it, I had to do a lot of fortification from the inside out, and it looks kind of grungy, which I like. But what I did was the fabric, I put it, I glued it in inside out. So as this continues to wear and tear over the years, over the next hundred years, as I suspect it will, what you're going to see coming through is the fabric that... Uh, that it's lined with so um, so that will look pretty even as it ages and has wear and tear on it and then to close it up you can just simply do that and the nice thing about it is, it is if you make it too big of an alligator mouth yourself you can adjust this bow that's not tied in a permanent knot you can loosen it or tighten it as you as you see fit. So that's a strange story. Going along with a strange story will be several of the pages out of the text block so that you can have fun and make some uh, tags or whatever it is you wish out of that. The Let's flip this up here. The lining of the spine fell out and I wasn't sure what to do with it. And whenever I'm not quite sure what to do with something, that's my gut instinct telling me, let the new owner decide what they would like to do with it. So, and it's the same with this whale tail tab. I wasn't sure where to put it. I was liking this as it is, so I decided I'm just simply going to send it along to the new owner and let them decide. And then eventually, once you've used these things inside your journal, you can use this little clip and put it um, in your book, wherever you want, or have it sticking out the side. That's the cool thing, even about movable clips. So there you go. That's a strange story. This will be, as I said, uh, listed in my Etsy shop for now until I come up with uh, where my new location will be for selling my journals. And uh, I'll write down below in the description uh, what day and what time you can expect to see uh, a strange story appear uh, in my Etsy shop. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. I hope you'll take a moment to click like and uh, say hi down below, and I'll say hi back at you. Take care. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.